Hi everyone, it's Karen here. Welcome to another video with me. And today I'm going to share with you how I created this super bright but simple card using a gel plate background. I've got the Squarely gel plate. I've got a couple of stencils in the background. I've got the gorgeous colours in Distress Oxides. I've got Mustard Seed Seedless Preserve. Peacock Feathers Spiced Marmalade prize ribbon and then Versafine clears I'm using Charming Pink, Warm Breeze and Vedant. The stamps that I've got here, this one's called Daydreaming. I've got the foliage, mini foliage set, the vine set, Mystic Swirl. I've got some white splatters on the background. The two stencils that I'm going to be using are these they're the larger ones so they this one doesn't even have a border perfect for the gel plate one's called abstract and one's called splendor so that's abstract that's splendor i'm going to be using a few smoothies for my stamping i'm going to use nocturne i've got my brayer to apply the Distress Oxide to my plate. We will get started. As always, I'm using Multifarious card underneath it. We will begin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my gel plate. Now, I keep it in the clamshell. So I wanted to show you that when I get my plate, I will... Take the piece of acetate that's on the back and the front, take it off, and I just store it in my clamshell like that. The pieces of acetate that I take off, I store because you'll see later in the project how we'll use one of them. So there we have it. I'm going to take my brayer and I'm going to start with mustard seed. So when I'm applying my ink to the brayer, I will put the brayer down, pull it and lift it up. I don't roll it backwards and forwards. Pull it, lift it up. That way the brayer keeps spinning and I get a good even coverage of ink on the brayer. And then again, pull, lift, pull, lift. And I go backwards. No, I don't go backwards and forwards. I repeat going back over where I've been several times. That way you don't get any marks on your plate. And then what I'll do is I'll just take a bit of this off on a spare piece of paper and I will always store my brayer that way up. Then I'm going to take my abstract stencil and I'm just going to pop it. I'll use, I like this large one. I'm just going to pop it on one edge of my plate. Picking up prized ribbon with a smoothie. And I'm just going to dab in through the stencil and a tiny bit around the edges of it. It's quite tricky to see, actually, even when you're this close up, but it's not an exact science. So there we have a tiny bit of blue on the plate over here. I'm now going to take this stencil. Isn't it amazing? It doesn't matter how big your space is, you always end up working <laughs> in a tiny space. So I'm going to place this one down here and take my seedless preserve with a different coloured smoothie and I'm going to do the same just tap 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 over the stencil so that we can get a nice bit of colour when we take the print there we have it 
And I'm just going to pick this and then I'll just clean this stencil with some water and a cloth. So picking up my piece of card, I always like to have a piece of card that's slightly bigger than the gel plate. This one's a lot bigger, but never mind. Just going to pop it down. This is the best bit. I love just smoothing it over the plate. And then you've got this lovely application of colour in the background. Then I would usually just wipe it with a bit of water and a piece of kitchen towel before putting it black in, back in the clamshell. I'm now going to trim this down and I'll come back to you. I like to trim it down before I start my stamping because then I don't have any of the white bits around the edges distracting me. I know exactly what I'm working with. So I'm now going to use the circle masks and in that set you get three masks. There's a large one and two smaller ones and you also get the apertures. There's a large aperture and a medium sized aperture. So I'm going to use the medium sized one here because let me tell you what size I've ended up with. 11 and a tiny bit. <laughs> Do you know that measurement? And 11 and a tiny bit. So it just depends on how you've cut it um, as to the exact size you end up with. So I'm going to take this middle aperture and I'm just going to pop it on my card, taking my smoothie and my spiced marmalade. And I'm just going to create a lovely moon in the background. There. And I'm going to go quite hard in with this colour. I want it to cover what was there before. So this becomes the focal point. Right, I'm going to keep that in place. Just a bit of torn copy paper. To protect the sides of the card while I take my fan brush and a bit of water to create some splatters on my moon sun background here because I didn't want that to go all over my card so that's why I've got these pieces of paper to protect it. That's it, I'm going to lift that up and then I'm going to take a piece of kitchen towel and just dab it. That way you get these lovely splatters, a bit of texture in the background there. And always I'll clean my stencil off before moving on. And that way the next time I come to pick it up, I know it's clean. Then I'm going to stamp my daydreaming fairy in the center. And for this, because I've got a bit of texture happening in the background, I am going to use my stamping platform today. I'm going to take Nocturne, ink her up and just pop her down so that her the main part of her is set against this circle background. That way she pops and becomes the focal point of the card. Now. As I said, that's why I'm using my stamping platform. Perfect. 
The reason it didn't come out as well as it could have was because I've got this water splatters in the background. But I didn't want to heat dry it with my heat gun because I want to use a paintbrush and some water and just bleach out some of this background behind this toadstool. And if I'd have heated it, I wouldn't be able to do the bleaching as well. So I'm going to let that dry and come back to you. Now, before I do my stamping, my foliage here around the edge, I am going to put my frame around it. Now, something happened to my video. It just stopped halfway through and I was carrying on because I thought you were with me. <laughs> so here we are. What I did was I left you last where I had just um, stamped daydreaming onto my card. I then took my smoothie with my peacock feathers. This was one of the first colours I ever bought. I love it. And you'll have seen me do this a thousand times. I just take my smoothie with a piece of acetate, one of the pieces of acetate that we just took off the clamshell, in fact. And I'm just going to go around the edge of the card to create a frame, just as I have here. And I did that all the way around the card. I wanted to do that frame before I did my stamping. Usually I do it afterwards, but because this is such a delicate stamp, I just didn't want to smudge any of that beautiful um, flourish. So once you've done the blending around the edge, then I took Warm Breeze in Versifying Clair and I inked up this lovely flourish stamp and I stamped one here, one here and a tiny bit here. So again, I apologise for that. We're back up to where we were. <laughs> and now I'm going to take my mini foliage stamps. I've got two of my favourite colours in Versafine Claire. Vedant, which is just lovely for grasses and foliage. And then Charming Pink, which is what I'm going to use to ink up this beautiful mini wildflower foliage stamp. And I'm just going to pop a couple of these at the base Oops. of the toadstool or the mushroom. And I do like to take my stamp pad to my stamp and not the other way around. I just feel as though I've got a bit more control there. And you can see that I'm varying the heights of these as well. Do you know what? I want that one. So I'm just going to mask this off while I stamp the big one. Because I want the big one just there. Now that's left me a bit of space in between to come in with my little vine just love it. If you ever want to know the names of these stamps and the links, they are all linked in my YouTube channel. They are also linked on the Lavinia Stamps website under the videos tutorial section for each day. There we have it. Look at that. So we've got this lovely little foliage happening with the mystic swirl around the edge. And then last but not least, I'm going to create some white splatters around the card. Because I want my centre to be free of splatters so that it stands out even more, I'm going to take one of the inserts from that circle set and I'm just going to pop it. It's, it's, it's slightly larger than the aperture, but that's okay. I'm going to pop it that way. 
And then I'm going to take some white paint with my fan brush and splatter around the edge. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep it around the edge here, leaving this center part to pop. And so there we have it. The last thing I will do is put a tiny bit of glitter on her wings. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being here. I'd love to see your makes and I'll be back again soon. Bye for now.